Well, hello, Lisa. Hi, Sharon. I'm Sharon on the West Coast. And this is Lisa on the East Coast. How are, are you? you? <laughs> we, we are. <laughs> Our delay is off. <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's a wonderful day here in Southern California. It's going to be 93 degrees where I live. Can you believe it? Girl, no, stop. <laughs> it was in the 50s just two days ago. Ugh. Y'all are gonna <laughs> y'all are gonna be in it. I be a lot of sick people around there. Yeah, it's a hard yeah. adjustment. I can see the summer cold season is gonna be brutal. I predict. Well, mm. if you are dropping on, guess what? You are dropped in on Coast to Coast Beauty, and I am Sharon Davis on the West Coast. And I am Lisa Washington on the East Coast. <laughs> Together we are Coast to Coast Beauty. Beauty. So thank you for joining us. We've got a great topic today. <laughs> it's kind <of> uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we're talking about today. Well, the topic is I didn't know and nobody told me. <laughs> <laughs> and what is what we didn't know about that we're struggling with now? Yes. Oh my goodness. My list is so long. I'm gonna let you go first, girl. Would you like to go first? Because mine is so long, you probably won't get in if I, if I go first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, specifically talking about the things that you wouldn't know about is going to happen or could happen as you get older. I mean, it's some doozies, Lisa. <laughs> and even as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking of more that I didn't put on my list. <laughs> you know, um, in front, it was funny because last week we were supposed to talk about this and we had some technical difficulties and weren't able to, to broadcast. And so shortly after that, I had um, a friend who was on talking about, wow, he was saying, um, you know, this gray hair and this, that, and the other, I can't believe all this is going on. And so I said, oh, that's funny because we'll be talking, we're going to be talking about that on my show next week. <laughs> and so I need to share this over to my page to make sure. Okay. Well, hey, while you are while you're sharing that, well, I, don't, I just take what you just said and and then roll with it. What what the the uh, gentleman said about hair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Start with that. Nobody told me that when you get older, the hair would stop growing in the places where you want it the most. It would thin mm -hmm. out or just completely give up, and it'll start growing in places where you never ever wanted to have hair. <laughs> Or longer hair. So um, it's thinner on my head. It's thinner in my eyebrows. And it's growing on my chin and my nose. <laughs> I, okay. I never thought I'd be an old woman. And one day I looked in the mirror. Something kept tickling my face. And um, I kept trying to figure out what it was. I thought a piece of hair on my head had just gotten... Um, stuck near the side of my nose and after just a whole day of being irritated couldn't get this hair off of my face I pulled them I looked in the mirror a couple of times and didn't see anything so finally I pulled out a magnifying mirror and looked in the mirror and it was oh my god it was so disgusting to me it was a nose hair that had grown so long it curled up the side of my nose I was, oh my I was so I was like Oh my God, it's official. <laughs> you it's official. are officially old. Not just that. I've never seen one on a woman. I've seen old men, you know, with, with hair growing out of their nose. And I, I in your ears, it, it, grow, it can grow out of your ears too. I've <laughs> seen old men with the hair growing out of their ears, but I had never seen it on a woman. So when I looked in the mirror and saw it on myself, I was really, really uh, overly grossed out. I was really concerned, alarmed, all of those adjectives. I was like, oh my God, it's official. I turned into my granddad, not even my grandmom, but my <laughs> granddad. <laughs> so if you're a gentleman out there, 
I've seen it on a lot of you. So <laughs> my advice is, oh my God, trim it. They sell hair trimmers in Walmart <laughs> that'll yeah. trim nose hair and ear hair and without cutting you. Okay, so do not try that with a razor. I saw somebody try it with a razor. Well, I saw a nick on someone's ears once and I said, what happened to your ear? He said he tried to shave the hair that was growing out of his ears while he was shaving his face. <laughs> So do not try that with the razor, okay? I think for about $5, you can go to Walmart and go to the section where they sell clippers and razors and get you a hair trimmer that will trim hair in your ears and your nose and it won't nick you at all. <laughs> and it runs by batteries. <laughs> you know, on the thinning hair, that is like, I can't, I can't believe it. My hair used to be so thick. It just seems like... I mean, and not only does it is it thinner in terms of the the volume, but the the size of the hair follicles follicles become thinner, thinner. Except for, except for of course those little gray ones. They are massively bigger. <laughs> they're, not, they're not limp. They're not wimpy. No, they Oh my goodness. Oh, I see Miss Anna Lee is here. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Mama Lee is here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. For me, mm -hmm. it's the skin getting looser. <laughs> what? Uh, the skin is getting looser in different places. And 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 if you lose weight, even you know, a few pounds as an as you're getting over 50. It, it shows, you know, your skin will show it because it doesn't have the chance to catch up. I mean, <laughs> doesn't have the chance to get that rebound effect going. No bounce back. No bounce. Well, I won't say no, but it's, it's, it's slow. It's on the oh. slow lane. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So, so two things we've already talked about was the hair growing in place, thinning out in places where you really want it to be thick and healthy and plump and juicy, and then growing in places where you never wanted to see hair growing. I mean, you might have known it was there, but you didn't want a visual of it. <laughs> <laughs> So two solutions though. We never we didn't say we were gonna talk about solutions, but hey, why not? The solution for the hair growing in places where you don't want it, they sell all kinds of trimmers. And you know, hair does grow in other places because you know, women, we have to shave our legs, we have to shave our, our arms, we have to shave all kind of body parts. And uh <laughs> so by the necessary tools. Gail, I, I was just saying hi to Gail. She's uh, she sent me a message, I guess, from my other page, saying that yes, hair does thin out as you get older. Oh man! <laughs> but, but isn't that the topic we're talking about? We didn't know. No one told us. We expected to get probably gray hairs, right? right? But nobody says that what you have will be thin and wimpy and unhealthy looking and struggling. <laughs> So somebody, so that's why what we're doing today, we're telling the secrets. So if you are there in your, oh, be ready. <laughs> it's coming. My daughter-in-law uh, was over here last week uh, and, and she was, my son said um, to my husband, like, oh my God, I never seen you with glasses. And, and he wears them on the tip of his nose. And he's like, yo, these are to read. And, and then she, she chimes in with, well, yeah. I'll, and it happens like, just like that. She said, last week I didn't have any trouble, but now I'm having my long, my arms are not long enough. <laughs> like, so yeah, that happens abruptly, it seems like. It doesn't it for me. like slowly move in. It's just bam, you you can't see just uh, see close up now. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what happened to me because my favorite part, my my absolute favorite pastime is reading. Absolutely. I love it. I'll take it over television. I go on vacation and read. Mm, I mean, when I'm stressed out and I need to relax, I read. And one a day, I went to bed one night and I woke up. And the next night, I got ready to read in bed. And my arm was out here and I was still trying to stretch and still hold a book. 
So now I'm I'm almost resorting to getting an e-reader so you can make the the letters bigger. So they can be big enough for you to see because the print on the paper is not going to get any bigger. Even with glasses, they only so far they can go. So yes. Nobody yeah. said that it would be abrupt like that. I mean, really, I thought when I was younger that there were people who wore glass, who needed glasses, and people who didn't. And I was one of the people who didn't. And I, I was really cocky about it. You know, looking back about my 2020 vision, oh, my goodness. I was like, uh, uh, I don't need glasses. I have 2020 vision. Real <laughs> cocky about it. Until I woke up one night, went to bed one night, and I needed, like, <laughs> a lot of help. Immediately. So I, What'd you say? Immediately, like just bam. Immediately. I was alarmed. I thought something was wrong. <laughs> oh. was a part of life. But as we said, I didn't know because nobody told me. <laughs> no, nobody warned me about that. And, you know, they talk about this, I mean, commercials, this crepey skin, crepey skin. That's the first word. Yeah, it's the buzzword. And really, what does it mean? <laughs> Crepey skin. What is the skin doing that it starts to look like that? Mm. I don't uh, know. Maybe it's dehydration. Uh, you know what? We need to research that. Because mm -hmm. I hear the word crepey skin on commercials now. I see it um, in the industry that we're in, the beauty industry. There are products that say they're good for crepey skin. Um, yes. And, and like I said, I've saw a few commercials that talked about it. So it's like a real buzzword right now. So we probably need to um, do a little research on that and find out what actually causes crepey skin. Yeah. <laughs> I know we have a couple of products that's supposed to work with it, but I never bothered to say, hey, what is that anyway? And what causes it? Right. Yeah. Because if you know what's causing it, then you're better equipped to try to prevent it as well as eliminate it even. Yeah, correct and eliminate. Yeah. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So and and um one of my um other ones is memory. Oh gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Another area where I was total I confess I was totally cocky. I was like, I have a mind like a steel trap. I mean photogenic. If I see something, I take a snapshot of it and it's there in my mind forever. But <laughs> and 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 um confession. My husband still says that I can remember what happened back in 1902. <laughs> he says I never forget anything, but he just doesn't know. There's so many things that I'm sitting here and almost invariably I drive out of my garage, go down the street. And when I get to the end of the street to get ready to leave the neighborhood, I'm sitting there because I have to go left or right. I can't go straight out of the neighborhood. And I sit there like, where am I going? <laughs> I cannot remember where I'm going. I'm sitting there and sometimes there are cars behind me, neighbors trying to get out and they're sitting there looking like, what is she doing up there? I'm trying to remember where I was headed to and I just got in the car and pulled out of my driveway. So memory is nobody told me that as I got older, I would forget everyday little mundane things. <laughs> All right. And, and you know, the mem the way the memory works is you'll remember the, the 1902 stuff but what happened yesterday or why did I come in this room right now <laughs> yep yep my, I caught my daughter up on that recently because you know there's times of course when you're talking and and you're going to repeat things mm -hmm. over that you may have said before or ask questions that you've asked questions before and she's like real quick just like you already asked that you already talked about that and I stopped and said, wait a minute, that's never happened to you? And she goes, well, yeah, maybe once or twice. I'm like, really? I said, well, baby girl, get ready because it's coming. Awesome. So you might want to be a little more gracious about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, I, it was so alarming to me that when I first started noticing, I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm getting Alzheimer's. Um, I'm like, oh, my God. I thought it was medical. It was so alarming to me that I wanted to go to the doctor. My husband was like, 
there's nothing wrong with you. Just you just mortal like the rest of us. I know you think you were a superhero, uh, immortal, one of those demigods that you like to read about. He was like, I know you think you're one of those, but that just means you're normal. You're mortal like the rest of us. But I did. I did. I did. I made an appointment and went to my doctor and they were like, it's just a regular aging. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding? No, there's something wrong with me. They were like, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> Nothing. You know, I used to, I used to be, uh, I could dial a phone number, a phone number that, you know, I dial, if I dial the phone number more than three times, I remember that phone number. I mean, and with my job, I had an enormous amount of phone numbers and people to keep up contact with, but now, you no, know, I mean, and I, I avoided putting numbers in my cell phone because I knew that that was going to break it. I knew that was going to, once I didn't have to do that, that I would lose that ability. And, and sure enough, as they say, I never use that word, but sure enough, <laughs> use it or lose. as soon as I put my phone numbers in my cell phone, it's, you know, I'm, you, you have to rely on that now because. Yeah, it is true. It is true. I, I fought it for a while too. Now, you know, yesterday I had to, um, I, I was going to um, call my son, one of my sons and, I had to look at his phone number and I thought that is so pitiful to myself yesterday. I thought, Lisa, that is pitiful. You do not know your son's phone number. And, and it was alarming, but then I was like, Oh, forget over it. Let yourself off the hook. Nobody remembers numbers anymore. And I just got, I got myself over it. But at first it was, it was a moment where I thought that is so crazy that you don't remember your child's phone number by heart. You got to look it up in the phone. Yeah. My, even my husband's phone number. I do not know his phone number. I, I know the first three numbers, but I I do know that because every time we're somewhere and somebody asks for his phone number, he's like, babe, what's my phone number? That's the reason why I learned it for him. Not for me. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Oftentimes you don't even know. You remember your own phone number. You don't call yourself. So right. it's not ingrained in your head. But, you know, there are times when you use that for identification now. So, mm -hmm. so what else we had talked about the change in in your body what happens with your body crazy skin hair is thinning can't see um indigestion issues <gasps> something that you can eat before just is not working anymore <laughs> and then, oh, oh, yeah. I thought Tums and um, antacids and Pepto Bismol and all that stuff was for old people. And then now I realize that I have um, on my nightstand in my bathroom and my travel bag. They're everywhere. <laughs> it's official. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's official. We are here. <laughs> and we're trying to warn somebody <laughs> because nobody told us. <laughs> We mm -hmm. didn't know because nobody told us. Yeah. I remember sitting in a, a staff meeting in my early 30s, and I was being kind of cocky, saying, Well, all of you people that have, you know, volatile, um, hot flashes and drastic temperature changes, why don't you sit on one end of the table so that the fan can be pointed just towards you guys? <laughs> you know, of course, I I put that on me so bad because <laughs> yeah, yeah. You called it. You called it from you. You you called it from the universe, girl. I called it into my my frame of reference, and yes, I'm having temperature changes. Just knock me out, up or down. It's a, it's not good. <laughs> and <laughs> something I call. I, I I don't I'm not doing the temperature changes yet. Oh. But oh. Something I you call from the universe. What'd you say? Yeah, I want to talk to you now. <laughs> I already know it's on its way. But what I did call from the universe was having to go tinkle a lot. So I remember saying to one of my girlfriends. Oh my God, I hate to go on a road trip with you because you are Sister P a lot. That's what I would call it. I was like, hey, hold it. <laughs> I literally told her, I nicknamed her Sister P a lot. 
and I said, oh my God, do I have to go on a road trip for you from Atlanta to Miami is what? I don't know, 12 hour drive, whatever. I don't know, something like that. And you have to stop every hour. We are never going to get there. And <laughs> She would drink. She was like, oh, stop, stop. I need to go to the bathroom. And I would stop. And then she would come out of the bathroom and go to the counter with a big gulp cup of I was like, stop drinking. So <laughs> she was like, I'm thirsty. And we would have these arguments about, I was like, if you stop drinking, we won't have to stop every hour to go to the bathroom. Now, it doesn't matter what I drink or not, a lot or not. I am the one who needs to stop every hour. <laughs> so I, 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 I totally called that in from the universe because I had such a negative attitude with her about her needs to stop. She, so, hey, be careful. So young people, be careful. Okay, what you say. Be, be very, very careful of the things that you um, have no patience with for other people because the universe has a sense of humor. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It certainly does. And that's that's that particular one's not well, all of these, none of them are gender specific because they happen, uh, you know, male and female and and so forth. So you 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 can't uh, you're not going to get a break. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just warning you because we didn't know because nobody told us. <laughs> no, there's no get out of jail free pass. <laughs> the only way out is through. So yeah. you're you're going to you're gonna go through it. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. And recently, uh, someone told me I think it was you that you know that as you get older, your feet grow more. Yeah. So, I mean, you have like that, that, mm -hmm. It used to be that it grew longer, but as you get older, it also spreads wider. Yeah. So your yeah. shoe size change. And your so, heels grow too. You told me that. I didn't yeah. know your group. But you don't have to change ear pads or anything. That's just a, an annoyance. If if you don't, if you wear your hair uncovered, somebody might see them. But shoe sizes, if you have a collection of shoes, especially expensive, nice shoes, and that you have taken great care of and you love them, you might find yourself going through a closet, giving away or taking to the thrift store or taking to Goodwill dozens of pairs of sh nice shoes, nice. which I have had to do twice in the last, I don't know, five years. Really? Twice. I had to do that after I had my son. And, and what was so devastating, I mean, I worked at J.C. Penney's in the shoe department. So <laughs> I had like 312 pairs of shoes. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was useless to me. Yeah, so I guess that I'm looking looking for that to happen again, Lisa. <laughs> you know what? Um, I will confess that the first round that I called the shoes, um, there were some that were kind of tight, but I can get away with them. But eventually, the, I couldn't even get away with those anymore unless I wanted to just hobble around. And I have literally left home in shoes and came home in nothing. Until I finally said, "This is crazy. I need to be comfortable." And the, they have got to go. So I had to get them out of the house so that I wouldn't try to wear them. So <laughs> I'm in the process now of trying to rebuild a shoe wardrobe. I, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah because Nobody talks about if I have to get rid of them again is that I was working at JCPenney's and the shoes that I have now do not come from JCPenney's. <laughs> so it's like a more, a much more costly um investment mm -hmm. yes <laughs> yeah hmm. That's just I, I, I literally have several pair of shoes in my closet right now that i bought recently i haven't even had a chance to wear them simply because i had to start from scratch start from scratch so yeah somebody should have told me that i might have read because i you know what i have a i had a girlfriend now me i liked expensive nice expensive shoes and when i say expensive i'm not talking about the red bottoms i'm talking about <laughs> Macy's <laughs> or, you know, uh, Parisians or, you know, some of the, uh, the department store shoes. Okay. Now, um, but I would go to like Marshall's or Ross to look for discounted clothing. Okay. 
but I like I like nice shoes and I like to buy my 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 clothes from the sheer clearance rack, but I wanted my shoes straight up <laughs> off the shelf. All right, and but I had a girlfriend who would buy four hundred dollars suits and then she would go to pick and pay and buy her shoes. And I used to say to her, Why are you wearing that nice suit with those busted up shoes? <laughs> and she would wear she would keep the shoes way too long. And I just she was like, and but we we were just totally opposite. But I thought about that. She she didn't ever have to have that problem that I have of trying of watching uh, all that investment and all those years of trying on hundreds and hundreds of pair of shoes to find the right ones and go out the door. So she she actually was the smartest one on me <laughs> on that one. <laughs> and and for us ladies, you know, you just be, if you get to a point where you just don't want to risk wearing you know spike heels um, heels over. I mean, my daughter, I mean, my goodness, she, she'll wear those six inch heels like they're nothing and just glides across the room. I'm like, I think I used to could do that, but no, I'm not even, that's like suicide mission for me now. <laughs> I would not even try that. Nope. They don't even look, they don't even look good to me anymore. <laughs> don't, no, nice don't get them fuzzy house shoes. <laughs> uh-uh, no. Yeah. And you, you know, um, there's one thing that nobody told me that I have been, and this is kind of a little sad. It's like a fact of life, and it's not about what happens to your body. Um, and then, because because I also wrote a list of things that nobody told me that I think are good things. Okay, mm-hmm. so not all of it is woe is me, but the last thing on the list that on my list that I had that nobody told me was how many funerals you'd end up going to. That is the saddest. And as I get older and older, it seems like every week. And it's it's a little heartbreaking. And it's um, also an eye opener as to make you ask yourself, what am I doing? Is it really what I want to do? Can I live better? You know, mm-hmm. time is short. It's not infinite. And so um, nobody said when you get out, you know, when we were in high, when when I was younger, it seemed like every now and then you heard about a funeral and it was like, oh yeah, really? Somebody died? Oh, that's too bad. And it wasn't that big of a thing, but now it seems like people that you know and were close to, and it's like every week. And I'm like, oh my goodness, nobody told me that when you get older, if you are fortunate enough and blessed enough to be alive, you would watch the people that you know and care about move on, pass on. So, um, and it would have an impact on you. So that was one thing that nobody said. Keep mm-hmm. living and you will see. <laughs> so that, I, I say that like oftentimes I'll hear on the news, I'll, I'll be doing something and I'll hear so-and-so die and I'll stop and I'll, I'll wait to see how old well, how old were they? I mean that your first thought is and, and because I think when they're around your age, yeah, it, it, this hits differently. It does. Yeah. It does. It does. Or if they're younger. <laughs> yeah. Or if they're younger, they, you, you it hits you differently. So those are the things that, you know, I wish someone had told me when I was younger so that I, I wouldn't have been so blindsided by them <laughs> when I got older and had these moments. So if you're young and you're listening, um, you can't say anything. Nobody told you because we're <laughs> uh, truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth right here. <laughs> right. <It's> our motto. <laughs> but, but not only just warning younger people but just saying to people our age validating that yep it that's happening and it's not you're not alone you're and not alone you're not by yourself we're in this club together and so forth but i didn't make a, a good list that's awful of me <laughs> i mean what well okay <laughs> this team at denny's what else you got Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say though discount at Denny's one oh my goodness but <laughs> the discount everywhere honey I love AARP <laughs> they, they sent you no they send you this paper and says oh my goodness next year you'll be eligible and I'll be like oh I can't wait <laughs> I want my discounts everywhere okay you haven't been, you haven't been um 
You don't have ARP already? They just I did, started I sending you that. stuff? No, I said that before that I, I was eligible, they sent me a letter the year before and said, next year you'll be eligible. But we're going to gift you uh, an early entrance and for, for a year. And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> so. I, I have I have vengefully avoided signing up with AARP because they came off to me as a stalker. I mean, before you even get 40, they start sending you stuff. And I said, how, how do you know I want to be old? <laughs> Girl, I wasn't offended. It's money. It's savings. They have savings on tires and car insurance and cruises and woo. Okay. <laughs> that got my interest. All right. I bought I bought insurance policies for a bunch of my grandkids for a few dollars a month. And uh yeah. So yeah, so it, it it was something that really it's valuable. It's valuable because I know my my kids are grown and they're in that phase in their life where you know every all the money they make they spend. And I so I think that since they have little kids, life insurance policies are not at the top of their list. And you know, as a grandparent, you know, I know that's one of the other things about getting older. You realize the value of all kind of insurance when you get older. So I was able to buy a bunch of insurance policies for my grandkids. I don't have them all, but I have a lot of them. And so, yeah, AARP, yes. <laughs> so that's one good thing. Without <laughs> what you say now? Is that I keep hearing this? static i don't know why it's doing that it's anyway oh. you're not hearing it cool so hopefully it won't come out on the recording i didn't hear, it. I didn't hear it. sometimes though when i go back and listen to the recording i do hear and see things that i didn't hear and see before <laughs> okay so <clears throat> things that are on my good list that nobody told me um nobody told me that my tolerance and patience would get so much bigger. I have always been an impatient person. I wouldn't say intolerant of things that most people are intolerant of, which is diversity. You know, I've been always, but, but tolerant of family and friends and looking over their thoughts and um, just chalking it up to it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. So I'm really thankful that as I get older, um, I can just love people where they are. <laughs> you know, even though when I was younger, the things that they didn't change, the things they do are still the things they do. But as I get older, they just don't bother me as much. I don't feel the need to correct them. And I don't feel like it's a personal, have anything personal about me. It is it's their journey. Then I get to love them, or if I can't love them, at least accept them right where they are. So if I had had that ability when I was younger, oh my goodness, life would have been so much easier. <laughs> so that's you one know, of the I think for me, I I have increased tolerance and patience in some areas, and then other areas is like, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Put my foot down. <sighs> That too, but Sharon, you're right. That too, but you know, I put that in a different category because it's also easier for you to move people out of your space when you get older. So the ones that I don't have the patience for, it's real easy for me to just move them out of my space. <laughs> yeah, that, that's Oh, uh, okay. So um, what else was there? Um, and, and let me see here. I'm much more likely to please myself. There's no peer, there's not, not as much peer pressure, hardly any. <laughs> when you get older, peer pressure is, it's almost a thing of the past because you're, you're at the point where it's about you. You can do you and you, you respect other people's right to do them, but you also adamantly defend your right to be you. <laughs> I love that. Because in, in when you're younger, everything seems to touch you. What people think about you, what people say about you. 
um, how you look, you know, now I want to be comfortable. You know, cute is okay with me. Whereas before it used to be fashionably, you need to be fashionable. You needed to be, you know, on point. Now, you know, cute is fine. <laughs> so that's on my list. And um, what about you? If you had to well, think about it, even though you didn't start a list, what about you? What are well, some of the good things about be getting older that you like? Well, definitely, you know, I just love being a grandma. I really do. I just do. Really you my, do. My granddaughters, they are just awesome little people and their little personalities and so forth. And, and yeah. And not only that, the, 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 the change that you see in your children who are raising these people and, and they're, <laughs> that's yeah. what, just funny. I just look at them and think, uh-huh, mm-hmm. You're doing that now. Let's see what happened in 10 years. But it's that I enjoy my granddaughters so much. And and I do enjoy that um slower pace of things. I I do. I, I mean I couldn't keep up if it wasn't for honest, you know, honestly. But <laughs> you know, just not having that that rushed thing and I know that that also comes with being a mommy and, and having you know a career as well but just being able to just be and not have to in yeah. the world of craziness <laughs> yeah you know what you just said um Sharon reminded me of something um I was reading um this lady was talking about how her and her girlfriends was at that edge of sketch moment in their life and I thought, what's she talking about? And she said, it's the point where, especially as women, where we get to the point where we, the kids are grown and gone and our priorities that had, that were set almost in stone for the, like the last 20 to 20 plus years is now different. And you get to, you know how an extra sketch where you shake it and everything is wiped clean. And so, and then you get to start turning the knob and designing a new um, uh, a picture or a new whatever on the etch sketch. And so I thought, oh, what a cute way to put that. I love one of, that's one of the good things. I love being in this etch sketch moment in my life right now. So what a cool way out to, to put that. But yeah, nobody told me that there were life after kids. <laughs> We never even thought about it. I never even mm -hmm. thought about it. I mean, in some days, it's really like, oh, I mean, and for some reason, for some reason, I could see my daughter as, as a grown woman. When she was mm -hmm. little, I could visualize her being a grown up and, you know, having her life and doing, you know, whatever she was going to be doing and so forth. But for some reason, I was stunned with my son. I mean, even now he can come to my house and I open the door and I'll look at him and I'll go, Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, and what's so funny, Lisa, is that he he had a nickname DJ, and when he started school, he came home and said to me, "Did you know my name was Raymond?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, I knew your name was Raymond. So why do you call me DJ?" And I explained him why we call him DJ, but he he tells me, "No, you can't call me DJ anymore. I'm Raymond." And I'm like, "Oh wow." I mean, he would answer to DJ. Now, there were some people in his life that he gave a pass, like the grandparents, because they were old. You can call me DJ. And so you you would see his friends, the ones that knew him when he was younger, calling him DJ and family calling him DJ. And then other people calling him Raymond. It's like this split. And I I find myself thinking about him in as before five as DJ and after five as Raymond. I mean, it's so crazy. But yeah, I was I was stunned by that. I just haven't gotten I he's a grown up. What happened? When did that happen? <laughs> yeah. It's funny. But yeah, um yeah, nobody told me that I would have the empty nest syndrome. That's what it that's basically what it is. Even though it's not it's it's more missing their childhood than 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 you know them. I mean, these are different people. I don't even know these folks now. <laughs> I, don't know. 
<laughs> I never had that problem. I, I, I don't feel like an empty nest problem. Um, I never feel, I don't feel like I have in, in, empty nests and I don't, I don't wish for childhood for my kids. I'm so glad they grown on nothing the world to do. <laughs> hey babies, I love y'all all. So glad y'all grown. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I do have, you know, I know people like you and a couple of the girlfriends that are really, really, really into grandparent. Now I do have grandkids a lot of them i have about 15 oh. so, <laughs> so my grandkids experience will be totally different than yours with two or three so um we don't even have enough time in this show oh five oh wow okay five. I have a great grandson oh wow you know what you told me that and i forgot i'm sorry you do five granddaughters and one great grandson. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I don't have any greats yet, but we'll see. We'll see what comes down the road. I won't be surprised. And I'll, I'll probably still feel the same way. You know what? I'm not the grandmom that is the, oh, I'll rock you. I'll babysit grandma. I'm the grandmom that is that said when they get the phone call to say, Hey, um, baby girl need a iPad for school. I'm that grandma. Or, hey, so-and-so needs money for summer camp. I'm that grandma. Or even... Well, I'm, I'm um, that grandma too, but... <laughs> <laughs> or, this child is driving me crazy. What do I do about this situation? That's the grandma, my man, that I am. Mom, You, what did you do when I... Did I ever do this? Yes, you did. What did you do to stop me? Oh, do you really want to know? I'm that grandma. <laughs> Are you sitting down on there? Sure, you sure, sure your heart can take it. So, um, in that aspect, yes, I I do enjoy uh, the, the I am enjoying the journey of being a grandma. But you know what? Um, just like names for grandmoms come in all different um, um, uh, um, options. Your style of grandmom ship is different just like your style of parent parenthood is different your style of being a grandmom is different and nobody told me that i'll confess that at one time people used to shame me because i wasn't the kind of grandmom that they were and i never let anybody shame me about being the parent that i was because i was just really deep into it but somewhere along the way when i wasn't the kind of grandparent that somebody else was a grandparent they i let them shame me into it and then as I got older, I was like, hey, you do you, boo. <laughs> I'll do me. So, <laughs> But nobody told me that it's okay and that it is going to happen. There is no one set of rules for being a parent or for being a grandparent. And I love that. I love the options. Woo, so that is my list. Um, to me, my, seeing my husband, I mean, our, the youngest granddaughter, Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, she absolutely just has him wrapped around her finger. She, they do this little thing where they stare each other down, um, and she always wins. I don't know why he even engages in this game with her. She, she's not quite two, but she'll stare at him, and he'll stare back, and she, he just. <laughs> it's funny does. seeing him react to being a grandfather. That's that is funny. <laughs> but anyway. The the best the worst the the only thing worse than getting old is not getting old. Yes, I have to put in my little wisdom there. It's like, the only thing worse is not having the privilege to get old. Yeah. So even though we complain and we're being funny about these things, we're here to experience them, and that's a good thing. <laughs> And we are really thankful and appreciative of the opportunity to just be here to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And let everybody know that you can't say you didn't know because nobody told you because we're telling you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Well, it looks like, Lisa, that we have come to the end of another successful Coast to Coast Beauty would you say? I would say, and it's, it was a very pleasant one too. 
<laughs> Sometimes it's nice to whine a little. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I say? You can whine on Thursdays. Okay. Thursday. Or Saturday too. <laughs> no, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon in your case. No, you can. I, I think you can take one day a week if you need to. If you just need to have a pity party, you can do it on Thursdays. And, and it's good to just have it like scheduled, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thursday is a good day because Friday is coming, and you'll 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 be nobody wants to be unhappy on Fridays. No, nobody yeah. wants to do that. <laughs> well, I am Sharon Davis on the West Coast, and I am Elisa Washington on the East Coast. Ah, what did I do? And together, we are. Coast. coast to coast beauty, beauty. Yes. and now we're going to do our usual bye bye and kiss you off kiss you out not off oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 blame it on old age Sharon <laughs>